Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thanks for watching that UWAX removal compilation video today. Uh, you can see this first patient here has this really hard lump of wax, perfect for the St. Bart's hook. We've got this lovely gap down the one side here. Now this patient wasn't really complaining of hearing issues because we've got this nice big gap, but more of a sensation in the ear. So when they had a bath or a shower and they got any water in their ears, it was feeling really, really blocked up. Now that's because the water's getting down the side of this piece of wax and I'm not able to evaporate out very, very quickly. So the patient was feeling blocked for a good few uh, good few hours after having a bath or a shower. So we've managed to get the St. Bart's hook behind you. You can see this white material here. So this piece of wax is really, really tough as old boots. It's hard old stuff. And it's anchored against the side of the ear canal from this little bit of dry skin. So I couldn't get the St. Bart's hook in. It was that tough to lift it up in front of the camera for you guys to see. So we've had to use the uh, suction tube here. And let's take a look behind there. You'll see that little uh, stretch of dry skin here. We'll see the eardrum beyond. Look how the ear canal was really irritated. It's all the blood vessels have come to the surface. It's quite pink, quite aggravated in there as well. Uh, so we've taken a little bit of this dry skin away, but we don't want to pull too much because it's really tender in there. So we, my advice to this patient though would be to keep that wax as dry as they, uh, wax their ear canal even as dry as they possibly can for the next couple of days. I'd forgotten the rulers in that particular clinic, guys, so I couldn't have the, I couldn't give you the ruler shots on that one. Uh, so this is the second patient in the compilation. Very, very different wax, this one. Very soft. Patient's been using some olive oil to soften this up. So we're using the suction tube here just to remove that surface soft wax. Uh, there will be a, a kind of hard core of, uh, of wax in here somewhere. So we're going to work our way very slowly down to that now just tidying it around the edges. You can see a little lift of dead skin there at the base of the canal as well. Uh, that happens quite a lot when a patient's been using a lot of olive oil in here. It almost over moisturizes the, the canal wall and you get these kind of separation of the skin layers here. So just try to tease this down the canal. It's very messy in here though. You can see there's a lot of very liquid wax in there as well. Uh, so nice little bit coming away. Let's see if we can get a grip on this central section here. You can see how the, the canal shape changes as well. So we go from this kind of shape, it's more kind of, it's almost twisted and, and, and become more of an oval shape as well. So we're just drawing this down. This is that harder bit of wax that we knew we'd hint counter somewhere along the line here. A lot of very soft, wet wax underneath it as well. You can see that coat in the canal wall there. So that's mostly an oil or a very, very thin wax. Now, that's what's supposed to be in the ear canal uh, if you do produce wax. It's a very, very thin layer to protect it from infection. So a centimetre across. <laughs> I'm not going to get too too confident with the inches here. It's a one, two, three, four. Five. I think I'd say that's at what? That's a, a, a quarter of an inch? thereabouts, I, I give or take uh, a lot probably. Uh, but you can see here, this is the uh, third patient on a compilation. We've gone back to a very hard type wax again now. So we had a very hard one, very soft. Now this is back to the hard type. Uh, there is a little teeny weeny gap down the one side of it. So the patient has been noticing their hearing's improved a little bit recently after using a bit of olive oil. It's just loosened it, taking it away from the side of the canal wall a little bit. Uh, we're trying to hold on to this, look at that really all starting to pull forwards nicely there. So holding on to that plug, a little bit of a wiggle just to detach it from the canal walls and then very, very slowly bringing this down the canal. It's a bit like quick fire wax removal, this one. They're all, all quite short ones today. Um, nice little plug, that one. Ah, now this patient has some scarring. Now there's a bit of history. So this patient suffered with infections and they had grommets fitted. Those two white patches I'm pointing out there is actually scar tissue left behind from uh, probably a little bit from the grommet and a little bit from the infections the patient was having as well. So it's almost a thickening of the, uh, of the eardrum there. So this is the piece of wax that we removed. <laughs> oh, I haven't got my easy read rule again. Um, a quarter of an inch thereabouts uh, and uh, just under a centimeter there as well so yeah quite a big and quite a hard old piece of wax that one as well a lot of unilateral ones in this uh, in this particular compilation so this is the last patient here a ah, very dry wax again you can see a little bit of a gap above this one as well but perfect for kind of rolling down the canal this one so let's see if we can get a grip on the top of this wax and very slowly draw this down the canal Anyway, you can see I'm just trying to get a grip roll here. There we are. You, we could, I, th I think it's a little bit too deep and a little bit too much of a small gap to get. You can see that the, this is the standard size on the tube, but not a massive ear canal here. So we probably would have struggled to get the angle to get the Jobson horn in there. We could have used a Rosen inserter possibly, uh, but it's coming away nicely with suction. So we're just going to give this a bit of a wiggle here. There we go. 
and out that comes. So it mounts to tilt off. You can see that kind of almost indentation there. Possibly a bit of, oops, it fell off. Possibly a little bit of Q-tip, <laughs> can I get a grip on it now? Uh, possibly a little bit of Q-tip use or cotton bud use on that one. Um, I think there might be one more actually. I think we might have another, uh, I forget how many we've done. I think we might have another wax removal after this one, I'm not too sure. But you can see it's come away really, really nicely there. Let's take a look behind that. Oh, there's a tiny, tiny little bit left over on that one canal wasp, mostly dry skin. You can see as we lift up that white, there you go, that whiter material underneath, that's actually dry skin there. So we're just gonna take that away, just snip the next bit off. We can see the eardrum beyond that it looks lovely and healthy. I'm just gonna struggle with this little bit of dry skin. Oh, there we are, it's starting to peel away nicely now. Let's peel it back the other way, there we go, and Good light reflex on there as well. So looking lovely and healthy. Have we got one more? I honestly can't remember. Um, so we've got oh, just under, a, they're all about the same size as well. I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch on that, three quarters, a quarter of an inch on that one as well. Uh, I think that's about right. And then uh, just under a centimeter. So they're all roughly about the same size in this one as well. I, can't, I honestly can't remember. I think there might be one more. Oh, there is, there we go. Um, Oh yes, right, this patient came through lots of really dense cilia around the outside of the ear canal here. You can see it's like a little forest in there. Uh, and the wax itself has a lot of these tiny little hairs. This patient has been trimming their ear hairs and those hairs come away, they lodge in the ear canal and they get embedded into the wax. So we end up with these really hairy wax clumps coming away. So you'll see that coming away here now. Now I know a lot of you are gonna be screaming at whatever your device you're watching this on going, ah, oh, you should trim the ear hairs. Um, they have a really important job. They're there to stop bigger bits of dirt and debris from getting inside the ear canal. My philosophy is if I can get it out safely without having to trim them, why bother trimming them? Uh, if it was really, you know, if we had a patient that was really, really matted with hair in there and I really struggle with it, then we may consider asking the patient to go away, trim their hairs and come back uh, and we'll see them again. But you can see once you get past that outer section of cilia, you can get a really, really good view in there. That's the, that's the beauty of the endoscope. You can really get in behind the tools. Look at those hairs, they're all sticking out of that one. You want to see the last bit that comes away. So we're going to take a look at this last little section. You can see this was really hairy. We've got to be really careful here because those hairs are jutting out at all these different angles. If you press against that, you're going to push those hairs against the ear, uh, eardrum, which can feel a little bit uncomfortable sometimes for patients. So we're just getting a grip on the side, drawing this down. Look at it, it's like, uh, what's the, what's the, Kaplunk, if you ever played the game Kaplunk, we've got all these bits kind of overlapping one another in there. It's kind of like that, all sticking out. Um, I suppose you could call it, what is it, a porcupine? I suppose that'd be another good way of describing it. But lots of hairs all sticking out in different angles. I've tried, the difficulty when the hairs all jut out like that is you can't always get a good suction grip. So I've switched now to the crocodile forceps. Let's bring this out. There we go, you'll have a good look at this when it comes away. There we go. You can look at those little, there's loads of those little hairs, like a little mini hedgehog in there. So loads of little hairs all around the outside edge. Uh, and there we go, there's the eardrum looking. A little bit on the dull side, I would say. There's a couple of tiny little flakes left at the bottom there. Uh, two centimeters, easy read with three quarters of an inch. That's easy. <laughs> um, so yeah, really, really uh, uh, quite dense ones there. Lots of very sort of quick ones. Now, when we do wax removal, in clinic, sometimes you'll have a day where they're all like this, or you can have a day like I've had today where everything's just taken forever to do. We've had some big ones in today. I'm not gonna spoil that, this one's coming up on Monday for you. Um, so what you can see here, that's the last bit coming away. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video uh, as much as I did, even though I did get a bit lost as to how many patients we had in this video doing it. Um, but as always guys, take care of yourselves, take care of your ears, and take care of one another. And I shall see you again on Friday. Bye everyone. <laughs>